All right, guys, welcome back to another Questions with Kaz. Uh, we appreciate all the, uh, the questions that we've been sent and try to get to every one of you as we can. So, uh, currently today, let's see, going in, we've got a uh, question from Stephen uh, Chaffee. I believe that's how you, Chaffee? We're going to go with Chaffee. Sorry, Stephen. I'm sure I butchered that. But your question says, uh, I'm currently doing a set of 6.0 heads for my O3. Um, I know I'll be buying a new set before long. Uh, but I like, really like being screw up. My, but my question is, on the valve cut angle, why are they 30 degrees? Won't they flow better at 45? Uh, looking at these narrow ports, or is it something with the recession that makes a 30 more efficient? All right, well, thanks for the question first. Uh, and 6 heads, there's a couple of things that I want to mention to you about. And it's not all about just the, um, just the angle of the, of the valve. Uh, 6.0 heads, uh, we actually have new castings there. There's some things that you want to know about that cylinder head first. They're notorious for cracking. Um, 6.0s are very problematic with that. Uh, one of the biggest issues though is where they crack. And it, around the injector boss area, uh, a crack develops a lot of times when guys are torquing. Uh, the injector down, the crack will develop all the way into the, the coolant passage. And if that happens, what, what takes place is, is that coolant is actually passed through um, uh, where the fuel is, and anyways, you wind up running into issues with fuel getting into your coolant. So that's something that you want to definitely make sure that you are aware of. So new castings are definitely um, a major improvement and worth the money. Secondly, to answer your question about the valves, um, the truth is, is a 45 degree, depending, depending on the blend um, on that valve, typically a 45 degree valve will actually flow better. Some cylinder heads, uh, ma manufacturers, uh, Duramax for one of them, they'll use a steeper angle. The reason why some manufacturers choose a 30 degree over a 45 degree has to do more so with longevity and the type of material that they're using on the valve. The steeper the angle, the thinner the margin typically um, is if you start altering that valve that once was a 30 degree angle uh, and you go to try to make it a 45 now, you're, you're cutting a, a razor thin margin in that area and uh, that's definitely not good for longevity. Um, heat dissipation properties are, are, are real um, and it can create bigger issues there. So if the, the original uh, valve was designed as a 30 degree angle, then you're going to compromise that valve trying to take make that big of a change. Now you can make some slight changes without any effect, but that's a that's a huge difference of 15 degrees, so it's not suggested on that. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, all right. So, all right. So question two comes from Lamar Zimmerman, and uh, he asks, why not add short fins across the top of the second gen valve covers for more cooling? That's a great idea. Um, something that I thought about. Um, the reason why is simply because the geometry of the 6.4. There's not a lot of real estate to work underneath the hood. And if we put short fins over there, it's just, I mean, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be brutal. It's going to look like the St. Valentine's Day Massacre for anybody that's trying to actually work on the truck and put their arm next to that valve cover. Even if they weren't sharp, uh, I'm sure we're going to get some calls from the fire department uh, with a guy got his, that's got his arm stuck in the vehicle while he's working on it. So, good idea. Um, if there was room, I'd be all for it. Uh, but um, maybe on some other models we might see that, right? So, keep your eyes open. Thanks for that question. <laughs> So, moving on to question three. Uh, this is from Jeffrey Goss. He asks, maybe a stupid question, but why don't engines have multiple thrust bearings? If the transmission is pushing the crank forward and you only have the one thrust bearing, doesn't that cause a bending? Well, I can understand what you're thinking uh, as far as the bending of the crankshaft goes, but there's actually not that much axial load uh, on the front. It shouldn't be. The times that you start seeing a lot of axial force that's acting on the crankshaft 
is typically when you're starting to see um, uh, guys that are running aftermarket clutches with uh, upgraded pressure plates. And the pressure plate puts a tremendous amount of force uh, on, on, that, uh, on that crankshaft. It's not so much of an issue unless you start running into it, it problems with ballooning converters. That definitely can cause uh, axial thrust and, and take out a bearing. Uh, the truth is, is, it depends on how you want to look at it. Uh, multiple thrust bearings, like for instance, uh, say a Duramax or a 6.7 Power Stroke or some, something along that nature of Cummins, they actually um, they have uh, an upper and a lower thrust bearing. Uh, it's not just on one side. So the other problem with that is, is that in order to do so, you'd have to have multiple areas um, machined into the crankshaft for that smooth surface for the axial um, bearing to, to push against. So that's not really available unless you were to machine that into the side of the uh, crankshaft. And in order to do that, the manufacturer of the crankshaft would have to, to add an area for material to be removed for that. Uh, it's just not necessary. There's no real bending that's going on per se of the crankshaft. Um, that the crankshaft's a, a hardened, a uh, forged seal. It's not going to bend like that. But the bearing, as long as there's there's ample um, fluid film that is on the or an oil film that's on the the crankshaft, uh, there shouldn't be any issue. It's 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 designed to withstand the load that the axle plate has on it. Uh, or the axial force. Thank you for that, asking that question. Good question. All right, question four. Um, I know it's been asked, and this is from Bob R. It says, I know it's been asked a million times, but I don't recall finding an answer I really trusted. What would be the EG, what would be the highest pre-turbo EGT you consider to be safe for a sustained period of say three to five minutes of high engine load uh, pulling up a long grade? Pulling up a long grade is typically the biggest problem that guys see. It's not so much, people are gonna tell you, astronomical numbers, okay? Um, it's not that the heat bothers anything per se. Let's, uh, I mean, guys can walk across, let's put it this way. There are people that walk across coals, hot coals in their bare feet, right? It's not the issue that the heat actually is the problem, so to, per se, it's the duration of time you spend on the heat, right? Uh, so when somebody shoots out numbers like 1600 degrees, if it's a spike in temperature and it quickly dissipates, metal has an absorption rate and it takes a certain amount of time for it to, trans to, to uh, transform in from, from basically into a solid, uh, they call it sublimination. It's not going to go from um, a solid to a, to a gas state without passing through a liquid first, right? But uh, it's not going to take place of that process. Obviously, uh, metal is just going to go from a solid to a liquid. But there has to be amount of heat, heat absorption for this transformation to take place. And pulling up long grades are where we typically are seeing, you know, for instance, Cummins guys get into a lot of trouble with the valve seats that are falling out. Um, but that won't normally happen until a guy gets at the bottom of a hill and he's on a long grade and he's withstanding, you know, he's, he's withstanding uh, that, that heat load for a, for a long duration of time. Um, 1200 degrees is about the point where you start seeing uh, the aluminum to break down and, and melt if you are going to continue on a sustained period of time. Um, but if I was gonna be, you know, climbing up a long grade like that, uh, I would wanna stay south of that range. Um, if you're talking three to five minutes, I'd want to, I, I would wanna stay uh, well below um, 1150, 1200 degrees just for uh, three to five minutes. If we're talking just a short burst, we can go much higher than that. Um, but but that's where you really get into trouble. It's just five minutes, three minutes is a long time when you're talking about heating up a piece of material. Uh, and five minutes is just, a, it's, it's, it's brutal. But anyways, uh, those are things that I'd be monitoring. So thanks for that question. All right, guys, thanks again for, uh, for watching, and we really appreciate the questions that you sent in. We hope that you continue to send those. Uh, if you've got a question, just put it in the comment below, the comment section below. Um, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Uh, we are on pretty much every podcast platform. I can't keep up with them all, but we're going to try, I think, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, um, Spotify, what a TikTok. What else we got? Uh, 
I don't know. If you can't find us there, I, I mean, I really can't help you. I'm sorry. I don't know. That's a lot of stuff. Who has time to watch all this stuff anyways? Google Music. Anyway, Google Music. Okay, whatever. Google Music. iHeartRadio. Okay. You get the point. We're out there. Find us. Come see us. Thanks for watching.